Hello there, gang. Devere here. As I uh, recently did a past last episode on a game called Knights of the Sky that well, there's a bit of a letdown in all honesty. I thought I'd make up for that with this. Fighter Squadron World War One. The uh, good thing about it is it's, it's free, basically. It's a mod. So what do we get option-wise before we discuss the game itself? There you get a few decent amount of settings here for your game. More advanced bullet dynamics and such, make sure you have them on. And you've got your display settings, not the not the greatest, but there, there's some. I'll just hit the reset. I wish you could do that every single time you hit OK. I should have hit cancel. Doesn't matter, it hasn't changed anything. A few sound settings. And then your input. Now you do actually have a pretty comprehensive launcher outside of the game for setting up your controls and your axes. As I am playing this, I'm actually playing this with the Xbox controller, not my flight stick. Just to show it can be done of sorts. Now there are issues which we'll discuss shortly in a minute. So it's OK out of here. So you don't get a direct campaign as such. There's no real World War One campaign. But outside of that, you still get a fair decent amount of content. So your training, you can pick a, a particular nation. And then you have a selection of aircraft that you can try in. And, and even ground vehicles. So you've got a fair amount. And as you'll see there, depending on what you've what aircraft you pick, it will give you a few little mini missions. So you've got a good selection. Well, I'm not sure why Australia's there is. There's nothing there. <laughs> Just like they're in Australia today. <laughs> Only joking, Aussies. There's plenty of things there in Australia. It just all wants to seem to kill you. So, I mean, yeah, there's a, obviously certain nations. Italy's only got... They're the two perhaps most well-known World War I aircraft. Because obviously, Italy didn't have a... Well, you know, Italy did have a fairly larger selection, but these were the mo two most well-known. Obviously, Germany, Britain and France have by far the most, most wide selection. Nothing from Austro-Hungary, though, which is a bit of a, bit of a disappointment. You've even got a Zeppelin. <laughs> so that's quite nice. And Scramble's just like basically a quick quick mission. Now, Network, you will need Hamachi if you want to play any multiplayer. So this is pure single player. And some missions. So it's a bit of a strange... There's a lot of them. You sort of pick a... You pick an, a, a theatre or a mission pack. And certain ones will give you just either one nation. Some allow you to pick between different squadrons and some allow you to pick through actually different nations well such as uh, see this yeah it's a, it's a bit of a strange mess trying to figure your way through these all seem to be <laughs> oh there is oh yeah for example where are they There's, there is there is actually missions for different nations France Germany there we are, for example, you can play that one as Jasta 4, or play it as 7th Fighter Detachment. So you get a lot of content. There is also a quick mission builder outside of the game. So somebody really liked the 23rd Squadron RFC in this game. <laughs> but yes, there's a fair decent amount, but what we'd probably do is just quickly dive in with the Africa and the Island dogfight. Let's hit fly. This will just this will launch us into the air, luckily. So there are some issues, unfortunately, which we'll get to very shortly. To do with the controller. Now, for the most part, it was actually set up... Actually pretty much well set up right at the beginning. In that the left stick controls all your axes. You have some fire buttons. It was already assigned bombs if you've got them is already assigned but there are some other problems the main the first one is the throttle I've tried to get it to bind to a key throttle up and throttle down on a, a button on my controller but it will not have it, it just will not have it 
Yeah, switching view controls, absolutely fine, not a problem. That, that binded correctly, the hat switch was already working correctly. There's also unfortunately some other issues. Now, as I said, the axes were, were pretty much right to begin off with uh, on the left flight stick. They were fine. It's the right control stick and also the triggers of the Xbox controller. If I zoom into my to my rudder here, you'll see if I right, I get a little bit of a minor wiggle. Yeah, if I, sorry, left even. Left, right, they're all the same to me. And if I push right, you see I get a full amount of rudder control. For some reason, the game will only see half of my motion on the triggers and on the stick, the right stick. Very strange. So you're kind of limited. I don't know, they look like bandits. So yeah, it's a bit of a bit of an odd, odd ball. I mean, honestly, you'd probably really want to play this with a joystick anyway, or a flight stick, a proper flight stick. I'm not going to dive down after him, oh I might go after him though. But all in all, I mean this isn't terrible, it's not the greatest in graphics, because this here, as I was explaining earlier on, this was a mod of a game called Screaming Demons Over Europe, or Fighter Squadron, that's a camel, I don't really want to shoot him down. I am of course, not. I do want to shoot him down. I am, of course, here yes, playing sort of camels. In these missions, your plane selection depends on what that squadron or yaster was flying at the time. We've got a better, decent range of views out of here. So yes, this was a this was a mod of a game called Screaming Demons over over Europe. Oh, yeah, there's a little bit bouncy there. That's. A, that's the problem with trying to use a controller over a flight stick with such limited travel. It does make it very hard to line up for sort of finer shots. And not having a, a, a quick ability to control my throttle is also a bit of a pain. Because obviously your throttle is as, is as much a control surface as your rudders and your ailerons are. And only having very limited left hand rudder doesn't make life any much easier especially in a camel but yeah so it was a, it, it was built on an engine called open plane fighter squadron Oops, he's getting around behind me which we do not want which was a very extensible open engine allowed lots of plugins and this is a basically a world war mod based on that engine so i shall pop the links down below should you wish to download it Right now, so there I really, really much rather terrible shooting. I've just had a collision. I lost anything? Yes. <laughs> so here's, the, here's one of the oddities. I'm not exactly completely crippled on losing my wing there. <laughs> yeah. You know, it is a it is a mod of an existing game, which was probably not designed with World War One in mind. It's not the worst looking. Plenty of plenty of content. Right. I would really prefer to be doing this with a flight six. So you see there again. It wouldn't be so bad at least if you could just hold a hold your throttle key down and it would you've got to constantly tap it as well on your keyboard. It's the plus and minus keys like you expect. It's just incredibly frustrating, unless we've got a few hits there. You really do want a throttle on a analog control, but there's no there's not really enough controls left to actually have it there. Is it's not seeing the full range of motion. So that is one downside. I do not know, understand why it won't at least see the throttle keys. Ah, there again, not having that left hand throttle is an absolute pain. Because the other downside of using an Xbox controller is your hat switch is directly below your below your, your left stick, which means to either have to reach across with your right hand to flick around or take your hands off the controls to that way. And at the moment, this, as you can imagine, with a wing missing, this isn't exactly responding brilliantly to my controls. Although we're not, we haven't crashed instantly like we would have. That's, that's an enemy. Come on. Let's turn, turn, turn. So it does have some more damage mod. But all in all, as you've seen, there's a fair bit of content, a lot of different craft to, to, to fly as. 
And if you do have a, if you do actually have a control stick, right, that's looking better. See here again, I'd really like to, to drop my chop my throttle a tad, but that's okay. He's he's cut across my, he's cut across there. This is obviously I'm fighting to keep this upright at the moment. <laughs> See now here goes some of his wings, and he's also still flying. Oh, he's he's bailed. He's bailed. So probably. Well, we do not want that to happen. <laughs> I don't know. I thought it was about gliding him. I'm basically flying with full right rudder at the moment to try and get any sort of turns going. <laughs> but yeah, so a lot of content, and it is a free free mod download. Now I'm, I've just downloaded the EXE and installed that. There are apparently a couple of patches. But I couldn't quite understand how they. The naming on them it seemed to suggest they were earlier versions than the actual game itself. So I haven't bothered installing them. You could obviously try your, that yourself. Because I've got off, there is some oddities. If, for example, X here will make me look out over the right wing. But if I press Z, it will crash the game. I'm assuming Z would have been the look out over the left hand side of the aircraft. And of course, graphically, yeah, I mean, this was based on the game that was released in, back in 1998. The original Screaming Demons by a company called Parasoft, published by Activision. Got very mixed reviews at the time because of some odd design choices. For example, there's no time acceleration. So, some of the missions, if you want to fly up from a base, go and do a line patrol, engage on any enemies you might find. See, here, I desperately want to chop throttle quickly, but I can't. It means I've got a Hold my finger over the keyboard and just start desperately tapping down. But yes, we have no time compression. That means that line patrol from base to back has to be done in complete real time, no skipping. I mean, as a controller, this isn't terrible. It's, it's still twitchier because of the because of the short stick throw. That's why you want to. Basically, that's why in a flight sim you want a full a full flight stick. Basically, so that you have a full range of motion. Just try to control an aircraft with only a few millimeters of travel either side. Even, even though this does have dead zones in it, so it's not as bad as it normally is with a Microsoft controller. It has its own in the game's launcher. It is still twitchier than I wish it like. Oh well, there we go. So I think we'll probably maybe go back to the menu at this point because. I'll see if I can't just touch down on an island. But just thought I'd fly it with the Xbox controller to show it is doable. And as I mentioned, it does actually, surprisingly, set itself up in quite a natural feeling way with the A button for the guns and the, if you've got bombs, they're on B. And depending on the aircraft, you might have a couple of different guns. For example, the SE-5A has a over-the-wing Lewis, mounted Lewis from gun, and that will fire on a separate button B. It is just a great shame for whatever reason the throttle will not just will not work. Based off the based off of putting it onto the control but uh, onto the actual controller. But yet yeah, yeah, the the view controls absolutely fine. All these buttons fine, just not throttle for whatever reason. So you have to kind of fly with your controller and you hand over your keyboard and desperately tap down like that. I'm hoping this is a friendly base. I'm going to all slide in the wings. This, this map is not toggleable, so you're going to have to hold your, your M, or basically M, and you sort of have to hold it down if you want to watch where you are. So it's a strange in between mix. There is, I mean, you, you can sort of spin and stall out. They're not hardcore flight sim models, but it's certainly a lot more advanced than the Knights of the Sky that we looked at. And yeah, it's free. It's a free mod. Uh, the main chap, Argon V or Argon 5. I've seen you, if you do any flight simming or you've looked in their forums, you will know, maybe recognise his name. I know he's the main bod behind it. I don't think it's still under development. Oh, this has gone badly wrong. <laughs> oh, no, we're getting away with it. Well, there we go. But the, the models themselves aren't too bad. The interiors are they're decent enough, I and mean, it's not not stellar, not high capacity, but it is a mod, so you know, fair's fair. But it's just those couple of odd issues to deal with the the axis. The axis is not being 
fully mappable, at least with the controller. Why the why the triggers and the right stick are funky? I've no idea. Oh, you won this mission. Oh, jolly good. Success, even with half a wing. So yeah. Uh, So a decent amount of content, but no direct career. If you do want to try multiplayer with friends, you're going to need to use something like a march or tungle if you to set that up. Oh, and you also hangar. So that you can just look through to different aircraft, but you can also take it for a free flight here. There's a decent, fairly decent amount of content, and in fact, you can drive a couple of vehicles and tanks around. If you take the uh, if you take the Zeppelin for a, a spin, you can jump through different crew positions on it. So, yeah. So, if you're looking for a decent-ish World War One flight sim experience, that's not mega hardcore, uh, then this is absolutely ideal. And even better is the fact it's free. And as I said, I will put those links in the descriptions down below, gang. So I think we'll conclude our dealings here. It might not be the best looking, but it's got plenty of content. Plenty of missions, and it's, it's also quite a small download. It's only something like a gigabyte, something like that. So all, all in all, highly commended if you're after a World War One flight sim. So I hope you found this video useful and entertaining in some way. And as ever, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to let me alive. And I shall see you all next time. Bye for now.